Good to have you. And of course, I have in the studio with me Paul Rivera and Sharon Davies, Consular Officers from the United States Embassy right here in Kingston. Listeners, I must tell you, every time the Consular Officers come here, you, you hear that music, they, they start to smile. I'm hoping that one of these days somebody is going to sing. I, I don't know why. That, Paul, I, th- I, 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 I thought you were going to sing a tune. Vernon, the last thing you want me to do is sing. Nobody really? would listen to your show if I started singing on your show. Paul, that's why they would listen. <laughs> they would want to know, Vernon, where get that band from? <laughs> and also, Sharon, you're, you're, both of you are now experienced um, broadcasters. Yes, <laughs> you've been yeah. here a few it's, times. It's always nice to come back, though. Yes. I miss you so much when I'm not here that I have to follow you on Facebook. Uh, I I do I realize that you all follow me. <laughs> that, you know I love that. And how much longer you have here? That's a sad thing about your your tour of they call tour of duty. They call it. Yes. Um, it's a for a specified time. So, uh, Sharon, how much longer you have here? I have at most about six more months. Ooh, ooh. Hopefully, I'll get to see you again after this. Yes, <laughs> yes, six months. I don't know where you're going to next. Uh, where in the world? Oh, we're going to Warsaw, Poland, actually. Well, it's much cold. Actually, it's pretty cold. It's cold out that end. What a thing. And what about you, uh, Paul? I've got another year left, and we're going to San Salvador after this. So I'm staying in the warm zone. Did I hear you roll that R? San Salvador. It's my so first. So you... Hablas español muy bien? Es mi lengua. Oh, so lingua. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> your, your parents, I think, are from... My parents are from Latin America. In fact, my dad is from El Salvador, so it'd be a little bit like going home. What a thing. Yep. So you'll, you'll understand the culture and everything. All right, today now, I, by the way, I hear about some special things that are going to happen. Yes, at the United States Embassy, the public affairs section, they are going to bring some excitement We have a big event. Kingston. We have our premier cultural event, which is wow. Blues on the Green. It's coming up this Friday. Uh, it's rescheduled because it was originally scheduled for right after the elections, and we figured that was not a good time to do that. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be at Emancipation Park. I'll make a comment, but I guess I will make it that <laughs> because I know th- literally thousands of Jamaicans want to come and watch it, and they, they're not going to miss that for nothing. I heard last year it was yes. a big success. Yes, uh, We had uh, Sweet Honey on the Rock last year. Wow. This year we have uh, Fantasia coming in and also Romaine Virgo and Jesse Who? Royal. Fantasia? As in fa- I can't even pronounce it. No, not, no, that you have said it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. And, and, and who else did you say? Uh, local artists. We have Romaine Virgo and Jesse really? Royal. Jesse uh, show starts at I seven. Jesse Royal. I said, hold on now. How much do I have to pay to come? Now? I'm sure I have to pay lots of money. Lots of money. You have to. Your presence is required. It is a free show. That's all. <laughs> but I don't it value is a much. Free the show kids. sponsored by the U.S. Embassy, partnership with the Ministry of Culture, Gender Affairs, and uh, Entertainment and Sports, as well as Respect Jamaica. Mm. We're all going in on it together. Hopefully, it's going to be a great, great event. So you're telling me all we need to come with is with our good behavior and just come with love in our hearts. That is it. And we live to see all these artists. This is really unbelievable. I understand also we shouldn't come with our empty hands. You know, I'm also sure that uh, you're going to probably, uh, you probably have asked us to make a donation. I know, the, I know the last time you you make sure that persons, well, persons who carried certain gifts were able, you were able to, um, to donate these gifts to an organization. That's correct. Uh, Th- this year we're we're supporting the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation. Oh, that's um, on Trafalgar Road there. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. So educational supplies, formula for teen mothers, any of those things are welcome and uh, and appreciated. So, Jama- listen, Jamaica, you're going to see a show for nothing. Vernon, speak, you talk to yourself. You know, last time I was so excited about seeing the show, I went with my empty hands. Oh, this time I have to go. If it's even a folder, if something I have to carry. So all we need to do is just carry something for these girls. Uh, um, f- on they have that their place on Trafalgar Road, right? Yes, That's sir. You s- you'll see the you'll see the big collection site, uh, and we'll be taking anything we can do to help for the help them. And if you if you en- if you enjoy the show, and you didn't um, bring something, you probably have to make contact and make sure that you carry something because I'm sure you're going to enjoy that show. It should be a fantastic event. Yes. And it's a kid-friendly event, so bring the what? whole family. A kid-friendly event. So. And that's not very common these days. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we ha- It's hard to find shows where you can take the whole family. So on Friday at what, 7? The show evening? starts at 7. And what a beautiful place. That that place is, Emancipation Park is a beautiful place. Lovely setting. It is. Yes. It's and perfect. I know the sound is normally first class. 
So, we are going to have fun, Jamaica, this Friday, 7 o'clock. Yes, Emancipation Park. Can you imagine? You're going to see top-class artists. And all you need to carry is your, your good self, love in your heart. And carry something for those ladies uh, uh, at the Women's Center on Trafalgar Road. Anything else is happening that you want to remind us about? Um, we know it's GSAT week. We know people are stressed out. So, Let me ask you, who, who do you think is stressed out? Everybody, the parents, the students. <laughs> I don't think the students are stressed I was going to say, I, I think the, mom, the moms are stressed <laughs> out. The, the, the moms no, are stressed out. No, don't leave out daddy. No. The daddies I, I are stressed out, too. <laughs> but, but daddies and moms get stressed out in different ways. Yes, so that's yes. what I've seen. <laughs> well, we want to wish them all good luck mm-hmm. and, um, and much success in, in taking the exams. And we have a special uh, shout-out for one of our own, uh, Christoph Josephs. Uh, at Mona Prep, his mom works with us, so we wish him and okay. everyone else well. Well, you, I, I didn't hear that. You have to repeat that one, you know. <laughs> Crystal, what again? Christoph Joseph. Christoph Joseph. Of Mona Prep. He's uh-huh. taking the exam as well. So. And those students okay. normally do very well at uh, Mona Prep. Very, very good school, good administration, you name it. Well, we have another minute left. Um, this, is there anything else happening? I, I must tell you something. Though. I passed by the U.S. Embassy, uh, I think, last week. And I still see long lines. And I was going to blame the United States Embassy, but I said, no, no, Vernon is not here for it. And I said, it's a good thing I do this program. And I, I hope that more persons will listen to this program and understand why we still have long lines, because I know that you guys have done everything to make sure the lines are not long. But um, we still go there half an hour and an hour before the appointment. Appointment. The, for one, the lines yes. are going to be there. We have over a thousand people coming to visit us every day. So there's, there's always going to be a little bit of a line. But the best thing you can do to keep those lines at a minimum is to show up at your appointment time. The time that, the time that you get on your confirmation is the time at which you should arrive. Mm-hmm. So if showing up, if, you, if it says 11 a.m., showing up at 8 a.m. is not going to help you, and it's not really going to help anybody else. It's just going to create a little bit of chaos. So if it says 11, show up at 11, and that's when you're going to get through. So that's, that's really the, the best thing that you can do to keep, mm-hmm. keep things moving, keep things flowing, not get too much of a backlog there at the embassy. Because some persons feel that um, if, you turn, if, you are, if you're an early bird, then that would be nice to give you your visa. No such luck, I think. No such luck. <laughs> Sad, sadly, no. So you, you are judged on other things, not because you're an early Because as a matter of fact, you probably make a, create a real challenge when so many persons turn up uh, too early. It, it just creates disorganiz- traffic, yeah. disorganization out there. The, mm-hmm. the, the, when you show up on time, things flow correctly. We have our system set up pretty well. Mm-hmm. Say so. You're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide 90 FM, a revolution in media. It's Ask the Council, yes, and we have Councilor Officers Paul Rivera and Sharon Davis with us. So, if you want to ask any questions about visa matters, and we, of course, if you want to visit the United States of America, you're not too sure what to do, then why not give us a call right now? But Paul and Sharon, I must tell you, I think I've mentioned it before the break, there are a number of organizations out there who they are helping persons, but in trying to help persons to get their visa, they sometimes create more challenges than probably helping them. I saw a case a few weeks ago where uh, this person went to this place to, for them to assist her to complete the form because many persons do not have access to computers and also to the Internet. So they go to these places to get assistance. Now, Many persons are very unsophisticated in terms of understanding certain things. They believe that whoever is doing it knows what they are doing. So you go to this office and they ask you these questions, you answer, and then they print it out. Uh, you look at it. I, I, don't, I don't think they even look at it. It says, thank you very much. But there are all sorts of errors on it. And, uh, there are. and I'm sure when these persons come to the embassy, their name is supposed to be Michael Smith. You know, a different name is on it. I'm sure you have a challenge with this. But let me tell you what. I'm going to take a call first. Then we uh, come back to that. We'll come part. back to that. I have right. a couple we things to tell Anne you about on the line. Good morning, Anne. How are you? Hello. Good morning. How are you? Where are you calling I'm good. from? I'm, I, I'm on the air. The, the whole world is listening to you. You have a very lovely voice. 
Thank you. Where are you calling from? St. Andrew. Hey, good to have you. You go right ahead. Um, Paul and My Sharon. brother is filing for me, and um, he needs to send in supporting document. He's saying that um, he needs a copy of my passport and a copy of my police record. Is that so? To send in over there. Caller, tell me your name. This is Paul. Hello? Yes, tell, me, tell me your name. Anne? Yes. Anne, this is Paul. Um, so it, 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 is, it is correct that he needs a copy of your passport and a copy of your police certificate. It's important that any documents that you send that are from Jamaica, whether they're from the police, whether they're from RGD, that what you send in is the originals. It's important for us to see the originals but, and not copies, not scans, not faxes. So he needs my passport over there? He, well, the, the, passport, the passport can... Hmm... That that is I'm actually not you. that that is actually something I am not certain about. If he needs your physical passport, I kind of doubt it. I suspect that a copy of your passport should go with your application. Over um, there. Correct. Um, and a copy of the police record. But did they say that the police record has to be you no know, less than two weeks old? Two weeks. That that sounds a little That's strange yeah. to me. Normally, your your police record, um, your police report is good for for a calendar year. From the time that uh, that you obtain it, um, the one thing I c- the one th- yes, ma'am, for one for one full year. The one thing I can tell you, I'm going to suggest to you um, also our email address, which is uh, one word Kingston IV. So IV stands for immigrant visa. Kingston IV at state dot gov dot gov. Kingston at state dot gov. Um, direct your question. Tell them you were on the show. Um, ask if you need to ha- send in your actual passport with your application, and somebody will get back to you almost immediately. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. All right. You have a wonderful day. Okay, let's now go to Anne-Marie. Good morning, Anne-Marie. How are you? So we move from Anne to Anne-Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I am blessed and highly favored. Why do you laugh at me now? Eh? <laughs> where where <laughs> are you calling from? from Aunt Anne-Marie. Okay. Where are you calling from? Okay, I'm calling from Crossroads. Ah, good to have you. Ready in Kingston. Yes. Um, I'm calling Reed to my daughter. Okay, good yes, morning, Emily. Yes, we are listening. Yes, I'm call- um, she went to the embassy um, on the 3rd of March. to um, apply- She got a 10-year visa before, and she went back now. I don't, I don't know what is the problem. My sister gave her a letter, and they asked her for a job letter, and she gave it to them. I don't know what is the problem. She didn't get through, so she's, she's, because she have a daughter. I'm going to be straight up with it. She have a daughter in the U.S. She's staying with her, her granny. So how much years now? A couple of years she don't see her. So she was crying that she don't get through. I don't know what's the problem. Okay, hi, Anne-Marie. This is Sharon speaking to you. Thank you for okay. calling in with your call. Um, mm-hmm. Was, you know, uh, applicants, they have to... Uh, convince the consular officer that they have sufficient ties here in Jamaica and that they're going to use their visa properly. Um, yeah. So it, it sounds like she didn't overcome uh, the, overcome um, the section of the law known as 214B. Uh, she's eligible okay. to, to reapply again once her circumstances change and, okay. and she'll be given a new opportunity to make her case. For why she so, um, how, how long from here she can she can reapply? Well, we advise people to wait at least a year. Uh, that's what's on the forms that we that we give people um, okay. when okay. they don't get through the first time. Okay. okay. Thanks much for listening. You're welcome. Have a great day. Yeah, man, you have a wonderful day. All right, let's go to another caller. Zedrin, how are you? Um, good afternoon. No, man, why are you rushing the day? <laughs> it's not afternoon it's not yet. It's not afternoon yet. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Where are you calling from? Um, Jamaica, Kingston. Yeah, man, good to have yes. you. You go ahead. Well, my problem is um, yesterday I went to the embassy and I get turned on. But the, 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 um, the counselor said, I, I'm working, we are working now for three years. And he said four years ago I was a gym instructor. But I can't recall, went up there four years ago. So I don't understand what really happened here. I'm sorry, what was your name? Repeat? I didn't get your name, ma'am. Um, 
Desreen. Desreen, Desreen. sorry. Desreen. Desreen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Desreen, thank you for calling. Um, again, we uh, advise people to... Um, you can apply again if you you feel that there was something that that wasn't uh, reflected or that you didn't get a chance to say in the interview when you you came in yesterday. Yeah. Um, we again I just want people to um, be honest about their their uh, current situation and their past situation um, when they're applying. And if we have questions about that, that may lead to uh, uncertainty. I, I, I um, with everything. I'm sorry? I was honest with everything. But he said four years ago I was a gym instructor. But I don't recall going there four years ago. Well, you what you can do, uh, because now we're getting into specifics about your case, if you have concerns about how that interview went, you mm -hmm. can uh, send an email to Kingston NIV, NIV for non-immigrant visa, at state.gov. Uh, I'm going to have to repeat it. After oh, sure. Uh, Sorry if I went too quickly. That's Kingston, NIV, yeah. at state.gov. Okay. All right. Okay. And what uh, you can do, if anything, you just text me. Let me know how it goes. If you're still having challenges, just send me a text message to 816 Five two six one. All right. We have another caller, Grace. Eight one six. Chris, oh, it's Chris. Sorry about five that, two Chris. Six one. Okay. Eight one six five two six one. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's now go to Chris. Chris, how are you? Good morning, Sir Daddy. Hey, good to have you. Yes, sir. And good morning, Miss Sharon. And good morning, Mr. Paul. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Chris. Chris. Okay. Um, what do I want to find out? You see. On the farm, it asks you if you have relatives over there. But the problem is, I never grow with the, the, the side of side of people. I grow with my father's side of people. So we never have to get in touch with each other and know where they've been. So now you get to find out where they are over there. Does it pose a problem? Chris, I would, I would, say, I would say no. I, actually, I, I appreciate you... Uh, being honest with us and, and sort of telling us your situation. Um, it's what, what you're presenting is a scenario that we see relatively often. Um, families, you know, you, you, I'm, I'm closer to one side of my family than the other side. Um, and at the same time, I would, I would like to see them. I would like to get close to them. Um, on your application, basically what we're, what we're looking for is to see, have an idea of who you might be going to see in the United States, why you might be going there. And at the same time, we want to have a picture of what your life is like here in Jamaica. Um, so on, on the form, it, it does ask you, what are your relatives in the United States and, and who are they? And you may be asked about it at the window. And, and w the story that, you're, that, that you've just told me, I, I would say, is a good one to say. You know, it, it, it's the truth. The truth. These are, this is my family. I don't know them well. I'd like to go up and find them, but at the same time, it's going to be important for you to say why it is that, that, that you should return to Jamaica, right? You need to make sure that we know that you, whatever your situation is here, we need to know why it is that, that, you, that you not only want to go to the United States to visit, but why it is that you want to come back to Jamaica. Because from our, from our point of view, our concern is that this is a tourist visa. It's a, it's a, you're going to go, you're going to visit, and you're going to come back. And what we want to make sure is that you have it's good not reason really to come it, back. It, 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 I don't have the tenure now, Mr. Paul. Um, I work on the, 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 the work permit visa, like artist, musician. Okay. That's a V. I don't have a tenure. Okay. But I just want to make myself very clear that me, you know, because I just find out they have some relative over there. So fulling out on a farm, I just really did oh. want to know if I could say, yes, I have relatives over there now. I think I know what he's saying, you know, but what he's saying, you know, it could see, seem as if he was not s telling the truth before. Because he no know of those relatives. So I if understand. he now knows, then it means therefore he will have to state that he has relatives. I understand. I, you know, I, I, I would say that it's, it's, it's just as I told you before, the, your, st your story is your story. It, it is what it is. I don't think that, I don't see that being held against you at all. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, Sir Paul, Miss Sharon, thank you very much. Sir Darby, have a blessed day. My pleasure. Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, you have a wonderful day. Uh, good morning, John. How are you? Where are you calling from? 
Good morning, John. Good morning, Mr. Darby. I'm calling from Montego Bay. I called. Uh, good morning to the councillors. You probably heard me complaining about not hearing from St. James. Eh? Yes, I call. Yeah, man, <laughs> yeah, man it's good to be hearing from St. James. You go ahead. Okay, um, my in I went to my visa interview on January the 12th. I, st I stated to the councillor that I was going to school and I was doing a part-time job. But for some reason, he only asked me how long would I be staying in the United States. And I told him two weeks, and he said, who would I be visiting? I said, my aunt. And he just handed me the green piece of paper and saying that my visa is not approved. And I don't exactly understand why it wasn't approved, so I'd like to know if there's a way that I can find out why was I denied, even though I... Um, prepared myself for the interview. I brought every document, my job letter, school letter, and none of that were being asked for or anything like that. John, thank you so much for your call. This is uh, this is Paul. Um, obviously, obviously, we can't discuss the 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 details of your of your case in particular. Um, every every situation uh -huh. that we see is is new more or less to us. So it's it's what, what I can tell okay. you is that that more or less it's important. For, for you to show that you are that you are established here in Jamaica, that um, that you have that you have uh -huh. good reasons to come back, um, and that that you make your case uh -huh. as as strongly as possible. You know, I, I don't I'm not sure what to tell you specifically on on your case, but um, I understand. You know, if if there if there are specific questions that that you would like answered, I would I would direct you certainly as as. Uh, my my colleague here, Sharon, did a little while ago. Direct you towards our email address, KingstonNIV at state.gov. Tell them you were on the show. Tell them you asked this uh -huh. question and that you'd like a little bit more more clarity. And someone will certainly get back to you on that as well. Okay, let me ask you the next question. Is there a way that uh, that I can find if I, that I could just go online and check if I'm qualified for a visa, or do I have to reapply and, and go through all that process? Oh, thanks for the question, John. Uh, n no, there isn't, a, a, I guess, a catch list of questions that you answer and it leads you to determine, yes, I'm qualified, no. Uh, unfortunately, uh -huh. that's not how it works. Oh, okay. um, what you would have to do is to reapply, and it's basically uh, you, you have a new opportunity to interview and to uh, attempt to convince the consular officer that you do apply, that you do qualify at that point. Um, so again, we okay. when one is refused, um, our standard suggestion is that you wait um, at least a year or until your circumstances change uh, to, to, uh, to allow you to mm -hmm. demonstrate, you know, what's new in your life um, and what things have happened that suggest you have stronger ties and reasons to return to Jamaica if you do travel. So. Not cutting you. So basically, you're saying that when I go in for my next interview, I have to state how my life is in better, better jobs, or if I have from building my hopes, I have to state that too. I guess it can't hurt. I'm not telling you what to do or what to say. Oh, um, I know. But I'm just yes, yeah, suggesting okay. that <laughs> in, it's in order to get a different result. Um, we we should be okay, saying something different. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Okay. You have a wonderful right. day. All right, you're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide Nadia FM, a revolution in media's Ask the Council. And my guests are Paul Rivera and Sharon Davis. Soon come back, don't move. Property taxes. Property taxes. We all should pay what's Your property tax pays for street lighting, garbage collection, community beautification, and parochial roads rehabilitation. Pay your property tax online or visit your nearest tax office and avoid legal action. Pay your property tax. Help us to serve you better. A message from the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development. Maxfield Bakery for Prince and Zambala too. It's Maxfield Bakery for the besties upon you know that's Maxfield Christmas for I'm 
Dopamine Maxfield Easter Bun The juicy fruity Easter Bun Order online and send abroad at MaxfieldBakery.com Or call Maxfield Bakery at 926-2160 Or 929-3897 And get yours before they're done Skiata Sesso Bethlehem Moravian College invites applicants for our undergraduate degrees an Associate of Science degree in Business Studies, Hospitality and Tourism Management, Social Work, Computer Repairs and Electronics or Criminal Justice, a Bachelor's degree in Early Childhood Primary and or Secondary Education, and a Bachelor's of Education with Advanced Standing for Diploma Graduates. Call 618-5999 or visit bmc.edu.jm. Bethlehem Moravian College, Mihi Kura Futuri. My care is for the future. Welcome back. You're listening to At Your Service here on Nationwide 90 FM, a revolution in media. It's Ask the Consul, and we have two consular officers, Paul Rivera and Sharon Davis. Uh, I have a question here for you, and we get this uh, type of question uh, very often. It says, I applied for a non-immigrant visa. I went for the interview recently and was told that I, ca I am not qualified for a visa at this time. Can you please advise me how long should I wait to apply again? And this is a question that we keep getting all the while. <laughs> I want to take that one, Paul. Or sure. Um, as as uh, Sharon has said a couple times and to our callers today, you know, there's there is nothing that prevents you from reapplying immediately. There's yes. nothing that prevents you. However, it's not what we advise. Um, we advise normally after if if you have been turned down for a visa. It's because the officer at that time judged that your circumstances were such that they they felt uncomfortable issuing you the visa at that moment. In order for your circumstances to change, improve sufficiently, we normally recommend, as we as we say on the sheet that we give out, that you wait about a year before mm -hmm. reapplying. Mm -hmm. All right, we have another caller, uh, Mavis. How are you? I am okay so far. How are you? Boy, if you are calling, you must be must okay, man. I love to hear the callers call, you know. Okay. Uh, where are you calling I, from now? I'm calling from Trent Elizabeth. That, this is say, I was talking about all these places I don't hear from in a long time. Great to be oh, hearing yeah. from yeah, someone. You hear from me? No, I call already. I call already. But you don't still don't call enough, man. You know, you Let know, me right? speak to I know much credit. <laughs> ah, you go and talk then. Yeah, um, I I spoke to you, the council already about my daughter filed from 2003, but I'm um, fortunate I I had to cancel it because my spouse died and I have to come back to Jamaica while I was waiting up there. But and I wrote them a letter and tell them that I was going to I would like to reactivate it. So they started faxing the the, 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 the procedure. My name and my date of birth and my daughter who filed for me. I haven't heard anything else. I just want to know where I'm at at this. I, I just want, uh, uh, Mavis, this is Paul. I just wanted to clarify the, the, your question a little bit, your situation. Um, so yes. so you, you, you were living in the United States? Yeah, I was, yes, I was there. And my daughter filed for me. Okay, and then, but you came back to Jamaica? Yes, I had to come back from poultry. Okay, and how and how long have you been back in the in, in Jamaica? Two thousand and five. So you've been back in Jamaica for about eleven years now. Yes. And you'd like to reactivate. Okay, so so your situation is this. Um, I th I think that that. Um, okay, so if you've been outside of the United States for over one year, if so, if you had moved to the United States, somebody filed for you. You came back to Jamaica, and if you stayed in Jamaica for over one year, no, you're no, no, no. It it had not come per, come through. You know, it had to come out before it per, it per, um, process. Oh, 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 oh! I see, I see. So yes, you're you're yes. still waiting. You're still waiting to see where you are in the filing. Yeah, because you asked me to fax in the my details. Okay. And I did that a couple of about a month or two ago. I understand. I want to know where I'm at with it. If it's Okay. Activating yeah. So at at this point, the the best thing that I can tell you is really it's something that has to be reactivated by your daughter. So you should you should get a hold of her, have her uh, oh. contact in the United States most likely, 
It's uh, U.S. Customs and Immigration Service. Um, their, their website is uscis.org. G-O-V. Oh, all right then. Um, I'm I'm going to call it chat. Suppose I don't want to bother to the filing, and I not just want to apply back for my, my visa. Cause it expired now, and I didn't renew it. Could I just like, come? I'll come in and and apply again for a visa. Absolutely, you can certainly do that, and uh, and we would certainly welcome to see you there. Okay, and, and I hope I get some priority, you knowing that my filing I put I give somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> all right, take care. You have a wonderful day. All okay, the best. You see? Thank all you, man. right, you take care. Let's now go to Sansia. Good morning, Sansia. Hello, good morning. Hey, good to have you. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Montego Bay. Ah, uh, no, my, I don't know. I'm happy to hear from my friends in Montego Bay. You go ahead. Okay, um, I received my VVS visa um, November last year. And they discovered it damaged, like the page glued together. So what can I do in that process? Oh, hi, Cynthia. Thanks for your call. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, so you said it was damaged. Uh, so if, yes. if it's damaged, you can't use it. I mean, it has to be readable. Uh, so it sounds like you may need to apply for a visa again. I mean, okay. was, you don't know how the damage was done, or? No, I don't know how it was done. So put it in a safe place. I'm sorry? It was in a safe place. Okay, but if, so if it's been damaged at this point, I can only suggest that you apply for a new one. Um, and you explain to the officer that you, it was issued, it got damaged, but uh, it has to be readable, everything has to be legible, and your photo has to be clear. Uh, in order to okay, be admitted to eyes, the U.S. One of my eyes is actually missing, and uh, everything else is readable except my eyes missing, and some of um, the U.S. U.S. of A. That information is gone. Y- yeah, that definitely needs to be replaced. Re-applied. So just go to usvisa-info.com, and you can schedule an appointment to come in for a new visa. Okay, thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Bye-bye. All right, you have a wonderful day. All right, thank let's you. Yeah, take care. Let's go to another caller. Uh, Jail, is it Jail or Gail? Dale. Dale, how are you? Dale, sorry about that. How are you? Not bad at all. Good to have you. Good day, Mr. Darby and the councils. Good, Good morning. Day. Um, one question. My sister started filing for us from 2004. <clears throat> have two sons. One was 13 at that time, and the other is younger. <clears throat> But now my sister, it was approved in 2008. Now my sister got the some papers from the from the embassy up there. So they, um, she said, there, my son's name, the big one, name is not on the file. So, so uh, Dale, this is Paul. Um, so, what what exactly is your is your question then? Yes, I want to know um, what happens if my son will not be included in the filing because he's 25 now right he is he has probably most likely aged out of that um of that we wrote, we wrote to the counselors and tell them that he's going to school he's going to utec at, at this moment right um in the the way that the way that these um these filings go it it your your situation is not is not uncommon we have for certain categories of visas what's called the child status protection um, which allows uh, students, young young people, to sort of maintain their status even though they have aged out. I don't I don't know in your in your specific situation exactly which which visa category you are, um, but it's it's worth it's worth finding out a little bit more just to see if if you if you qualify for that. I would I would consult with uh, USCIS uh, gov find out about the Child Status Protection Act, but it's certainly possible, and we see lots of cases that that the, the demand for these visas is so high, the backlog is, is fairly long, and, and it does happen that, unfortunately, by the time your your application becomes current, that uh, that some of these people who were who were kids when when this process got started are now are now grown adults and and don't don't exactly qualify for that 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 um, category of visa any longer. Okay. Your what your can I your situation then would be once you certainly is the possibility that once you get to the United States you could initiate a new filing for your son. 
okay. Oh, but I have to take another ten year again. That you know that that, that again you you you're, you're starting the process over at that point, unfortunately. Um, but that that's sort of that's sort of the best option that you that that you might have. As I said, you might you might want to consult with USCIS just to make sure just to make sure that there isn't something that could be done on that behalf. But without knowing the details specifically of your case, I I couldn't tell you for certain. How could I contact you? The best way would be through our our email address, uh, Kingston IV. You're asking an immigrant visa question, so it's Kingston IV as an immigrant visa at state.gov. At state. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for calling. All the best. Listeners, one of these days we're going to have um, a tape inside here so we can, we can record what goes on during the break. And I'm sure you'd love to hear that. Well, all good things must come to an end. And uh, we've been lucky to have our friends from the United States Embassy right here in Kingston, Paul Rivera and Sharon Davies, answering your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vernon. It's always an honor to be here. When am I going to see you again? Not soon enough. <laughs> ah, you forgot Friday. <laughs> Jazz. Um, uh, blues on the green. Blues, right. Blues on so the green I this Friday night there. at Emancipation Park. I will be there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Until Friday, right. 7 o'clock. Friday, 7 o'clock. Friday, 7 o'clock. Friday, 7 o'clock. Friday, 